Good evening. We're calling to order the meeting of the Arlington Select Board from Monday, March 15th, 2021. As a preliminary matter, this is John Hurd, Select Board Chair. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Mahan? Yes, thank you. Steve DeCourcy? Yes. Len Diggins? Yes. Dan Dunn? Yes. And staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Adam Chapdelaine? Yes. Doug Heim? Yes. And Board Administrator Ashley Marr is participating remotely. Good evening. This open meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth given the outbreak of the novel coronavirus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus and reduce risk of COVID-19 illness, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation in such unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Please also take care to adjust your screen or device name if you would like to speak in order for us to recognize speakers appropriately and develop accurate minutes. It is helpful for participants to see your full first and last name when calling upon you rather than a nickname. All the materials for this meeting, except any executive session materials, are available on the Novus Agenda dashboard, and we recommend the members in the public follow along as posted on Novus, unless the chair notes otherwise. We are now turning to the first item on our agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, question, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. This meeting will feature opportunities. This will, fe will not feature opportunities for public comments. Each vote tonight will be taken by roll call votes. All right, and that takes us to the one item that we have on the agenda tonight. So we added this meeting and this agenda item in response to a letter from Stephanie Kiefer that was sent just after our last meeting when we discussed, we had a presentation on the MUGAR project that Mr. DeCourcy gave us with just in regards to the substantial change to the project since the original project approval. Right after that, we got a, there was a letter that was issued which triggered a time frame for us to respond, which we have now a letter from that attorney Heim drafted that's now been posted on the Novus agenda if you've had a chance to look at it. So I'll turn to attorney Heim just for any additional comments regarding the time frame and what we need to do to respond to mass housing at this point. Attorney Ham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The sum of what is before the board is its opportunity to comment on the revised proposal submitted by the applicant in the Thorndike Place project with respect to project eligibility only. As folks may or may not recall, the first step in most 40Bs is for the eventual applicant to secure funding from um, an agency like Mass Housing. Mass Housing engages in a process by which they assess project eligibility and site approval. This board provided substantial feedback, more substantial feedback than is ordinarily the case in the form of two comprehensive letters outlining the many, many concerns that this board, and members of the community and other boards and commissions in Arlington had about putting a project on that specific site. 
mass housing granted project approval anyway. However, their project approval or their site approval slash project eligibility uh, noted a great many features of the project that they found essentially to be responsive to community concerns as well as their way of examining whether a site is appropriate. The revised proposal now before the ZBA substantively changes a lot of aspects of the project. For the public's education, let me note that a lot of those changes are made um, ostensibly because uh, they're responding to different pieces of feedback in the 40B hearing process before the ZBA. However, um, as this board uh, previously discussed, especially with Mr. DeCourcy's presentation, some of those changes have, whether they're intended or unintended, impacts on specific pieces that were germane to project eligibility. I've tried to capture those comments from a number of conversations this board has had. The board's original concerns as articulated all the way back in 2015, uh, 2016, um, and piece them together into a fairly tight letter. I know 11 page letters are never really that tight, but um, I focused on two main aspects of the board's feedback to mass housing that are affected by the revised proposal before the ZBA. So with that, I think the letter speaks for itself. I hope that it it, it accurately in, in, encapsulates what you folks have been saying at your meetings. Um, I did get a little bit of additional feedback. I made a few uh, corrections to the letter that was posted on Novus, some things like, you know, a few typos here and there, as well as one or two just, you know, wordsmithing pieces that I, that I got a little feedback from members of the board on. but so they don't have to all be discussed tonight. But with that, I'll, I'll take any questions and of course, any feedback. Uh, mass housing is 15 days to respond to a notice of project revision, which is why it's so important for us to have this meeting now. The applicant sent their letter in on March 8th. We didn't even necessarily, not all of you got it right away, or at least a full version of it right away. So uh, we wanna try to get this letter in. I had previously transmitted a letter on behalf of the chair of the board saying, please don't make a decision on this before you get substantive feedback from the select board. The open meeting law requires them to convene a meeting with at least 48 hours notice. Thank you. All right, and uh, we'll turn to the board. We do have the, the letter here, just for any comments, motions, and any revisions that the board might have. Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and, and, and thank you, Attorney Heim. And, and, um, Mr. DeCorsi for um, getting us to this point. Uh, my question is predicated on that myself and my colleagues. Diane, we just lost with the project in terms of the initial. Diane, we lost you oh, for no. a minute there. If you want to just repeat the question. Okay, it says I'm unstable. Am I still unstable? We can hear you now. Yep. Okay, sorry. Uh, say quickly. Um, th um, th thank you, Attorney Heim and, and Mr. DeCourcy for uh, engaging us in this process. Um, from what I'm getting from what we received is that the board is uh, petitioning HUD that this is a change in the scope of the project. Therefore, um, Oak Tree Mugar um, needs to start from the beginning and, and go from that process with HUD. Um, uh, I understand we have a slim chance versus no chance that will prevail on that. Uh, but if uh, two questions, if uh, we don't prevail, is it a done deal and they get to move to the next step or do we have something else that we on behalf of the town can um, uh, engage in? And if it's a no go and they get to move, you know, go directly to jail, collect $200, um, is the next step CONCOM, Conservation Commission. Attorney Heim. So what we're asking, or what you're asking, 
is for them to make two determinations. One, that the changes are substantial, that these aren't minor changes that are within the scope of what they approve for project eligibility and site approval purposes. And number two, that after finding those changes are substantial, that they either um, say that the project as proposed is so far out of scope of project eligibility that we're revoking eligibility, or alternatively, that the project needs to be uh, redesigned in a way that is within uh, eligibility. So there's a lot of branches that could go off of that latter option if they decide that it's not within the scope of eligibility, uh, yes, essentially the uh, applicant would have to consider their options for, are we gonna start over? Are we gonna propose to the ZBA the original project and just let the chips fall where they may with respect to conditions? Um, if, so, so the most likely outcomes, if we're granted the relief that we're asking for, are that the applicant would either have to re dramatically revise their current proposal before the ZBA, or they would have to start from scratch. Um, with respect to your, uh, what are the other steps the board can take? At this point, there's nothing else for the board to do. The board will have done everything that it possibly could have within the scope of its jurisdiction. However, I just wanna remind mostly folks at, at, who might be watching, because I know all the board members know this. The ZBA essentially has three options. They can approve a project on the same terms as the applicants proposing it, this revised proposal. They can approve with additional conditions or they can deny a project. If they deny a project, um, that matter would almost certainly get appealed to the HAC. One of the problems with denial is that it, it, it divests the butters of their right to appeal. Um, but there would be some litigation of the basis of denial. Um, and there could be an appeal of, from the HAC. And this board would be in a position to obviously support the ZBA's continued litigation of the matter or not support the continued litigation of the matter. It also may be in a place uh, with a denial or an approval with conditions that the developer does not agree to where it might have a more direct and central role in terms of negotiating some different outcomes. If they approve with conditions and the applicant doesn't agree to those conditions, it will be essential for this board, uh, as this board has talked about for years, to support that ZBA decision and be willing to back it up uh, with both resources and uh, political commitment to continue the litigation of that matter. So, uh, the CONCOM is and is definitely an eventual step, Mrs. Mahan, but it is, it is potentially many years away if there is a litigation of the underlying decision. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yep. Mr. Corsi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I'd like to move to authorize the, the chair to send this letter um, as proposed with the, the the edits, final edits between the chair and uh, Attorney Heim tomorrow. Um, and just a couple of comments. First of all, I want to thank Attorney Heim. Um, we were really, uh, this really had to be done quickly because it, as he said at the beginning, this letter was sent to Mass Housing on March 8th by email. Um, that's when the 15 day clock started. We were copied by regular mail. So had we gotten the letter by email on March 8th, we may have been able to at least address it or, or, or get going on it on the 8th. We were a few days behind um, and, and um, disappointed, frankly, that we weren't um, included by email um, because when, when the letter goes out to the agency by email, all the CC should be emailed too, in my opinion. So we, we, we were at a disadvantage. Attorney Heim really worked hard. Um, I, I can attest to it because I've talked to him several times over the past few days, getting this draft in really good form. I also want to thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your leadership in calling the meeting tonight, the emergency meeting, and, and um, allowing us to talk this over again and um, to, to get these comments out. And again, this follows from our discussion on March 1st, where basically um, at, at the end of the presentation that I made, I said that the revised proposal conflicts with both the original project eligibility letter 
in, in the um, contents of the comprehensive permit application that the developer submitted to the ZBA. And so because it's back to a project eligibility phase, we do have a role in this. Um, we're, we're addressing the issues on the, the removal of the transit, what we're calling the transition zone, which is the removal of the townhouses and bringing that 172 unit apartment building right up onto Dorothy Road, which is completely inconsistent with all the concerns that Mass Housing had. Um, I went through it before. I'm just I'm happy that we're able to, to get this done in short order and, and hopefully get it out tomorrow. And um, again, thank, thank you for everybody for, uh, for coming back here tonight to talk about this. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I support this. Anything I say would be repetitive to what has been said either tonight or in previous meetings. So I'm not going to belabor it and just say I appreciate everything that's been done here and I will be voting for it. Thank you. Mr. Dunn? Um, I'll second it if there wasn't a formal second that I missed. And uh, I thank everyone for uh, uh, everyone, um, Mr. DeCourcy for his eloquent speech last week, Mr. Heim for all of his work. Thank you, Mr. Hurd for uh, putting it on the agenda. Uh, and it, it, like the letter is very clear that the and that the uh, removal of the townhomes imposes a proposed building that is entirely inappropriate for the neighborhood. And the travel is really, uh, and the, in, in the egress is just totally insufficient for the number of units that they're talking about. So um, full approval, and I hope that the letter is heeded well. Yep. Thank you. And yep, I agree with all these sentiments of the board and everything that's contained in the letter. I wanna thank Mr. DeCourcy for all his comments and, and his, his effort on this. And especially thank Attorney Heim because it's been mentioned, but he turned this out very quickly because of our schedules. We weren't able to connect until mid to later in the week. And we received the first draft of this, I think at 9 p.m. on Friday night. So that was, you know, a really incredible effort to get this together for us in a quick turnaround. So thank you for that. Um, so without any further comments, we have a motion for approval, seconded by Mr. Dunn, Attorney Heim. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. It's an unanimous vote. And thank you all for um, taking the time to look at this on the weekend and give me any individual feedback that you had. I very much appreciate it. Yep. And given that there has been no substantial changes, we'll clean up based on the comments that Attorney Hines received from individual members and get this signed and out tomorrow morning by email. All right, with that. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yeah, it, it, just one other thing under the, the MUGARD discussion. I don't know if you were gonna move on to new business or move on to that other issue. Sure. Go ahead. Yep. Okay, thank, 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 thank you very much. And again, this is under the, the, the MUGARD discussion. Um, when we, back in January, we authorized you and the town manager to send a letter to the Mugar family to request a meeting to talk about the trash issues and develop a plan uh, at the property. And uh, th that letter went out on February 8th. The town manager followed up on that letter uh, by contacting Mugar Enterprises and he never received a response, uh, never received an, an acknowledgement from them. Um, I also want to point out that at the ZBA meeting last week, there was a Mr. McKinnon from Little John Street, and I think he's on the meeting tonight, asked the uh, developer's attorney what the property owner had done over the years as to contribute to upkeep of the property or to maintain the property, and the attorney couldn't answer. The, the, the response was, well, we're proposing something going forward if the town takes the property off our hands. Um, Given that, and, and given what, it, what I view as a, a, a you know, major disappointment that the town manager of, of our town sends a letter and he can't even get a call back, um, I, I think it's time to, to start talking about next steps vis-a-vis -vis the, the immediate trash issue and the plan there. And um, I, I would ask the manager to, um, and I know he already is doing this, but um, to start implementing plans, whether it's done 
administratively or, or needs to come back to the board. So I, I wanna raise that issue because it's it has come to light uh, again uh, and over the past several days, there has been a number of emails that the manager and I have received from neighbors who are concerned about the, continue to be concerned about the issues there. And I think it's time to, to um, take next steps. Thank you, I appreciate you bringing that up. I did speak over the weekend with the director of the Somerville Homeless Coalition who you know has periodically been cleaning up the property, but um, the trash is still there. So it's something that we do need to take care of. Mr. Chaplain, do you have anything to add to what Mr. DeCourcy had mentioned? Only that me and Mr. DeCourcy have been talking over the past several days. Uh, we'll be following up <clears throat> both with Mr. DeCourcy internally in terms of our next steps, as well as with the neighborhood about um, both acting either with or without the MUGARs to attempt to provide a better cleanup for the property. Any members of the board have any additional comments on the trash issue? All right. I fully support it, so thanks. All right. With that, we'll turn to new business. I don't know how that got snuck on there. Attorney Heim. Uh, one very small piece of new business. I, I want the board uh, to look forward to a discussion of, of, of where we are with respect to um, what we talked about in the executive session a number of weeks ago uh, with respect to uh, pending litigation matters. So um, uh, Deputy Town Council Mike Cunningham has been working very, very diligently on behalf of the town uh, to address something that is common uh, concern in the town that we affirmatively prosecute our rights relative uh, to contractual matters. So um, I want the board to know that we'll come back at the next meeting with a, a substantive update uh, in executive session. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chaplain. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. I'll just briefly mention, as I'm sure, as I know the board is aware, and I'm sure folks watching at home uh, have started to see in the news that the federal stimulus bill has passed and it appears as though Arlington uh, will be the recipient of approximately $36 million in federal aid coming from that federal stimulus bill. Um, right now, we're only aware of the broad categories under which those amounts can be spent and we're waiting further regulations from the Department of the Treasury at the federal level to help us better understand how we can utilize those funds. Um, I, I think it's, an, it's very good news, uh, but I also think um, it, will provide, it will provide us an opportunity to hopefully provide a long lasting benefit uh, to people across Arlington, given that a, a large amount of money and, and we'll, ha we'll have to be very careful to not uh, spend it more quickly than will be appropriate. So there'll, there'll be many more discussions on that stimulus bill to come um, as we learn more about the regulations, but uh, I did think it was important to share with the board and the public tonight uh, of that news. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chaplain. Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Sort of uh, carrying, piggybacking on um, what the town manager said. Um, Yes, it's good news for Arlington, uh, an apparent $36 million influx. Um, we do need a, um, a understand what we can spend those monies on uh, in the short term uh, COVID-19 relief um, towards citizens, small businesses. Um, and some have said schools, although it's my understanding that also under um, COVID-19 relief funds, the schools um, also will be receiving um, in the millions of dollars um, number to be determined, but perhaps similar um, that um, I just wanna make sure that uh, this $36 million um, allocation from the federal government doesn't mean we necessarily have to spend $36 million next year. And I agree with the town manager and have, a, have had conversations with the town manager, the chairman of long range planning, Mr. DeCourcy and Charlie Foskett uh, as recently as today to make sure that we um, address the short term COVID-19 town side um, relief implications and make sure we uh, use the money for that, but that we also have a long range um, plan Oh my gosh, long range plan for um, the remaining monies to see Arlington uh, through into the future. 
and hopefully um, remediating or mitigating um, any future overrides, whether they start in 2023, 2024, or beyond that. So um, uh, thank you to Long Range Chairman, Mr. DeCorsi and, and the town manager. And that's all I have to say. <clears throat> Mr. Dunn? Uh, no new business, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins? No new business, but I'm getting a feeling we're gonna be meeting on the 24th. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. DeCorsi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I just want to thank all of the workers from the town who were at the um, COVID um, vaccination clinic last week. I took my mother there for her second shot and uh, I was uh, truly proud to be an Arlington resident and, and just very thankful for all the work um, and all the care that went into that programming um, from Christine Bongiorno, Health and Human Services, Arlington Police Department, uh, Mr. Chunglo, uh, the Veteran Services Director, was checking people in. Our, our own Ashley Meyer was there, um, helping out. Ms. DeFrancisco was there. Um, Chief Kelly was um, handing out um, masks to people who were waiting their 15 minutes. And it was just a, a fantastic atmosphere, very, very calm, very uh, well organized. And um, I, I really, particularly for that age group, we've talked about it over and over again, that the local sites are the best sites for the vaccinations be, because of the, the way things can be set up and, and the um, just the comfort level that people have you know, being in their own community or nearby community. And I also wanna recognize Bob Bartholo Bartholomew, who um, as people were leaving, if they were from Arlington, he'd ask them what year they graduated and then would proceed to, to rattle off five or six names, no matter what the year was. So our, the Arlington High Historian, uh, Bob Bartholomew was that just capped it off for 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 me, and um, so I, I want to recognize everybody there and thank them and um, just just really uh, an outstanding program that 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 they're running there. Thank you. You know, I did also just want to mention the vaccination program, and specifically, I did, I did receive a letter from the chair of the Arlington Housing Authority, Nick Petropolis, that was sent to me to thank all of our town departments for really a really successful vaccination program, particularly the Board of Health and the fire department and all involved. So thank you for a very well run project program and we're almost there. All right, with that, we'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Attorney Heim. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. It's a unanimous vote. Thank you. Any folks? Thank you. So long, guys. Take care. Half hour. <laughs> nice. Bye bye. <laughs>